Hello, I have five new foundations at various price points and coverage levels to review for you in today's foundation roundup. You'll see how they apply, what they look like and how they wear on me, as well as what skin types I think would benefit the most from each. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I test a lot of foundations and concealers and face products in general because I'm in my upper 40s and as we age it just gets harder and harder to find the right products for our skin. So let's go ahead and get into these new foundations and see how they worked for me and if any might work for you. I always test foundations for several days using no primer, various types of primer, and different methods. These are not first impressions. That's important for you to know if this is your first time watching one of my foundation roundups. And I show you clips that I think give you a good picture of my experience with each foundation. I am someone that needs to set my foundations, although you may not be, and that's completely fine. I live in a very humid climate and I have combination oily skin that's pretty normal around the perimeter and can be dry, which you will see with some of these foundations today. And the center of my face can get some shine and oil breakthrough. The primers and powders that I normally test with, along with everything that I'm sharing and wearing today will be listed and linked in my description box down below. As always, some of them will be available through the YouTube shopping icons, but they don't always have everything. So if you don't see something, be sure to check my description box because everything will be listed there, including my lip combo, which I'm really liking. Although I am still testing out this new MAC matte lipstick formula. They reformulated their matte lipstick formula and I picked up Kinda Sexy, which is a shade that I had in the previous matte formula. And I topped it with one of my favorite drugstore lip glosses that's between two and three dollars. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Slicks lip gloss in the shade Snuggle Sash. It's a nice peachy combo I thought a few of you might ask about, so I wanted to go ahead and share it with you. And I'll go ahead and start with a drugstore foundation. This is e.l.f. Camo Hydrating CC Cream, which I shared briefly and applied in a video several weeks ago and said I would be reviewing thoroughly shortly. And here we are. This retails for $15 for one ounce. There are 30 shades. Now I am 48 years old and pretty much my entire foundation wearing life, I have fallen into the light medium foundation shade category until about a year ago when new foundations were being launched and being reformulated and I'm now in the light category for a lot of foundations. This is one, I'm in shade Light 210N, which is described as light with neutral undertones. This is vegan, cruelty-free, and alcohol-free, and contains a broad spectrum SPF 30 combination mineral and chemical sunscreen. Now this is supposed to be a full coverage, color correcting, hydrating foundation that plumps your skin with a dewy finish. It's supposed to be great for all skin types. It has tremella mushroom, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, and some other skin benefiting ingredients in it. Now I had a pretty bad rosacea flare up during these application and wear clips that I'm actually glad about because you get to see how this performs on dry skin that also gets shiny. This has a pretty thick texture and I do notice a sunscreen scent that does kind of linger. It applies quickly and blends out easily with a sponge or a brush, but I much prefer a sponge because a brush left streaks and picked up any bit of dryness that I had and just made it look much worse. Now I would say this gives light medium to medium full coverage at best. It's not for me anyway full coverage like it claims it didn't fully cover my dark spots but I'm fine with that. This has a dewy hydrated look to it that doesn't really look natural or skin like the way I thought it would. It just appears a little bit makeup-y. Even when I apply it pretty sheer. I just, I feel like I always look like I have makeup on and it does feel lightweight and hydrating, but somehow this picks up on every bit of dryness that I have. It's also not flattering on my pores and all of those things are exaggerated after I set it with powder, which I have to do because of the shine breakthrough that I get during the day if I, I don't do that and because this is so dewy. As the day goes on, the makeup-y dry look gets worse, 
but I also get shiny. It gets flaky and patchy and wears away pretty poorly. It just does not look great. Now I've worn this when my skin was behaving normally, when the dry areas in those clips were just normal. And the same things happen with the way it wears minus the dry flakes, the makeupiness, the patchiness, the wearing away in spots, not so good pores, all that, it still happens. It's slightly better when I wear it with a primer, but it still doesn't end up great. You can see here it still wears away in spots. Now I always try to tell you who I think would benefit from each foundation I review because the reasons a foundation may not work for me may be a reason it may work for you. But I'm struggling with this one. Any foundation that performs the way this did on dry, textured areas and shiny areas, the only skin type I can think that would really do well with this is normal, textureless, maybe young skin, which is not the majority of my demographic and why I do these reviews. I mean, the majority of you are like me, you're over 40, over 50, and you have texture, you have dryness, sometimes shine, you need to figure it all out. And yeah, this one just was a hard pass for me. This foundation wasn't on my radar, but a lot of you were asking about it in the comments. I was tagged over on Instagram, so I checked it out and then I saw the price point and I was really intrigued. This is actually my first About Face product and I picked up another About Face product to try out in my upcoming testing new makeup video, so stay tuned for that. This is the Performer Skin Focused Foundation and it's $22 for 1.08 ounce, which is a nice mid-range price point between high-end and drugstore. Well, I say that, but I do have a drugstore foundation that is the same price we're going to talk about here in a minute. There are 45 shades. I'm in shade LM1 Neutral, which is light medium one with neutral undertones. So I do fall in the light medium range with this foundation. It's vegan, cruelty-free, fragrance-free, and alcohol-free. And it's supposed to be a buildable medium coverage foundation foundation with a long wear second skin finish. And it's skincare infused with blue agave, wintergreen, and chlorella to help your skin feel moisturized, balanced, and smooth. This has a doe foot applicator that suddenly comes out, but I don't get any splatters, which is nice. I don't notice any scent to this at all. Even though things say they're fragrance free, sometimes there's a natural scent to them. I, I don't get anything with this. I dotted this directly on my face very conservatively because I didn't know what I was dealing with. I didn't want to go into heavy. I wanted to make sure I had a very sheer thin layer to start so I could build it if I wanted to. This gave me a very, very sheer layer. So I added another layer and built up in a couple of areas where I had some additional redness. And it does build nicely from sheer light to medium coverage. Since I knew what I was dealing with at that point, I went ahead and just swiped it all over my face on the other side where I'm demonstrating here and blended it with a brush. It applies beautifully with a brush or a sponge. I had a lot of redness going on this day on my cheeks specifically. One side was a little bit more red than the other and you can still see some of that redness peeking through because this is a medium coverage foundation. On days when I had less red it even things out a little bit more. On a day like this, I would have normally chosen a medium to medium full coverage foundation, but this is a true medium coverage foundation that's very flattering. My skin looks radiant and healthy and it's very smoothing on my pores. Once I set it with powder and my makeup's applied, it looks nice and natural and again, flattering. It also feels very lightweight. It looks great midday. I get some shine, but not a lot. It's not oily or greasy. And I would say I get about six to seven hours out of this when I don't wear a primer before it starts to wear away, kind of fade, but it doesn't fade badly in a, a patchy way or anything. I, I'm, I'm not mad at it at the end of the day. I do get more longevity when I wear a primer with it, but I love love the way this looks when I don't wear a primer. I think all skin types could enjoy this foundation. It's a true 
buildable up to medium coverage foundation that's really flattering, it feels good, and it's got some skincare benefits. If you have oily or combination skin, you may wanna try it with a primer or save it for shorter days and see how it works for you there. But if you have normal to dry skin or mature skin, I think you'll really like this, especially if you're wanting that you know sheer buildable up to medium coverage. I'm gonna go ahead and give you my full review and all the photo evidence that goes along with the other $22 foundation, the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence. Before I share my Hero Foundation, which is one of the remaining two that's left after this one. So this retails for $22 for one ounce. There are eight shades and I'm in shade 30 light medium. This is cruelty free and it contains 0.5% Bakuchiol, which is a natural, more gentle retinol alternative and tranexamic acid, which helps fade dark spots. Now, because people have been comparing this to the Chanel Water Fresh Tent or Water Fresh Complexion Rescue, I talked about that extensively in my recent dupes video. I'll have it linked up in the corner and down below because I'm not gonna go through all that again here. So if you want my take on that, go check that out after this video because it's, it's very interesting. The reason why there's a comparison is because of the micro encapsulated technology and they're water-based. Now they say you get an instant burst of moisture upon application and then it hydrates your skin for up to 24 hours and you can see those capsules burst and that's where the pigment comes from. I hope you could see that. If not, you'll see it in my application clips. This has a very watery, runny texture, which makes sense because of the high water content. And I notice a very strange scent to this that to me almost smells like rubbing alcohol mixed with something else. But that alcohol is not listed in the ingredients, only benzyl alcohol, which is not a bad alcohol. And I don't think it has that same scent. So I'm not sure what it is in here, but it's a weird off-putting scent to me. Now I like to dispense this on the back of my hand and swirl my brush into it and apply it that way and then I'll pat out any streaks and kind of pat it into my pores a little bit better with a dry sponge. I know people show applying this directly to their face and applying it as it's dripping down their face. I don't like to do that but I think I did demonstrate it that way just so you could see it. This is buildable from light to medium coverage so even though it's a water-based formula it is a foundation. It's not really a tint. You do get some coverage from it. It evens out my skin tone and provides some moderate coverage. Now I have a healing rosacea flare up going on here. And because of the things that I'm applying to heal it, my skin was a little dry in some areas. And this hydrating foundation exaggerated every bit of dryness and flakiness in such a bad way. Yet on my normal areas, is pretty nice. Now, I think it looks good from a distance, especially after I set it, especially if you're only looking at the normal areas. But when I zoom in and show you these really clear clips, it's a different story. I get a bit of shine during the day, but again, from a distance, things look pretty decent. At the end of the day, though, you can see the dryness the patchiness and how it's wearing away poorly. Now on days when I have no dryness whatsoever, I think I have a clip here. It may be from the day when I filmed that dupes video. It looks pretty nice. I still get shiny with it pretty quickly and it doesn't last long on me. It just doesn't perform well. I have other mid-range or drugstore medium coverage hydrating foundations that I like a lot better. I mean, even the CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream has never exaggerated dryness the way this does. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen my dupes video, this is 100% not a dupe for several reasons. That's not why I don't like it though. Obviously, it's just because of how it performs on my dryness and my shiny areas. This is another one that I'm really confused on who to recommend this to. I've seen others have similar experiences with the dryness, but some people really enjoy this. So if you're not too oily and you're not too dry or dehydrated, then I would say this would probably be really nice for normalish and maybe combo skin with absolutely no surface dehydration.
When products go viral on TikTok or Instagram, I'm always skeptical. And when I get them to test, I feel like I almost always think most of them are not worth the hype. But spoiler alert, I'm so glad I got this one to test because I love it. So this is the Polite Society More Than a Pretty Face Skin Caring Foundation. It retails for $42 for one ounce. There are 30 shades and I grabbed shade Very Light Neutral, which is described as very light with neutral to golden undertones. I know that's going to sound odd since I've said I'm normally light medium and have been getting light shades. Why did I get very light? So their shade system is broken out a little bit more than other brands. So they do very fair, fair, very light, light, medium, medium tan, tan, very tan, deep, and very deep. And within that, they do cool, neutral, warm. And when I looked at the light skin tone models, they just looked deeper in skin tone than I am. So I looked at the very light and they just looked more spot on to me. I wanted to point that out to you because if you're someone who's usually very light, this is not going to be that. This is deeper than a typical very light shade. This is the foundation I have on today. I'm testing a new primer with it, so I'm not quite sure what's going Going on on camera because the variable today is not the foundation it's the primer so this is vegan cruelty free fragrance free and alcohol free and it's a skincare meets makeup hybrid it's supposed to be buildable from medium to full coverage and be long wearing and give you a natural luminous soft focus finish and be comfortable hydrating lightweight and good for all skin types it has niacinamide for minimizing pores it has a vegan hyaluronic acid for plumping skin Skin, and it's got willow bark for brightening. This has a moderately thick texture and I noticed no scent at all. Now I purposefully grabbed clips from this particular day because I had been trying out and applying the new uh, Milk Makeup Jelly Tint blushes and I applied two shades directly to my skin, which is why my cheeks are so bright and tinted before applying this foundation. This blends out beautifully, quickly, easily. Now at first I thought the shade was a little bit too yellow, but as it started blending blending out. It really melded in with the undertones in my neck nicely. A lot of times my face has that surface redness, but my undertones are neutral warm and that's what I'm looking to match. And this does a nice job of that. This evens my skin tone really nicely and provides really nice buildable from medium to just under full coverage. It doesn't quite fully cover my sunspots, but it's almost there. I mean, you can see the coverage this gives and it looks nice and natural, not heavy, and it doesn't set so quickly that you can't work with it. I even used it as a spot concealer on this day to layer just over those spots and it worked pretty nicely. This does give a natural, luminous, soft filter finish that feels nice and hydrating and lightweight. And after setting, I feel like it turns into more of a natural soft focus finish. Now I can get some shine breakthrough midday, I would say maybe four hours in, but it still looks good. It's not greasy or oily or wet looking. I can blot and touch up with translucent powder and it doesn't disturb the foundation. It, it stays put. Every day I wore this, I was doing something and I kept forgetting to get end of day clips. I finally got one yesterday and it was in my very dim den, but I think you can get a gist of what's going on here. There's some shine there, but it's not oily or greasy. And my makeup is still fully on my face. This lasts really well throughout the day and it just looks really nice and flattering. If I really want to minimize shine, I can wear a mattifying primer underneath it, but I do enjoy it without a primer. I think this is a really beautiful foundation for all skin types, especially mature skin. I have lots to say about this luxury foundation. I'll try and keep it as condensed as possible, but some of these things I, I really think that you need to know. So this is the Prada Beauty Reveal Skin Optimizing Soft Matte 
foundation. It's $70 for one ounce. There are refills available for $55. They just slide down in here just like that. So you don't have to spend $70 every time you buy this foundation. There are 33 shades. The swatches were not in order when I purchased this. Maybe that's changed. I looked in several places. It was really hard to determine a shade. I ended up with LN25, which was described as light skin with neutral undertones. It is a bit too light for me. To make it wearable, I do need to add a little bit more bronzer than usual, but that's okay. I make it work. This is supposed to be a buildable medium coverage foundation with a soft matte finish. It's also supposed to be transfer resistant for up to 24 hours. It has broad spectrum SPF 17 sunscreen. I, I have a hard time not laughing at that. Why you even put sunscreen in here when it's SPF 17? And I have more to say about the sunscreen, the specific sunscreen here in a second. So this is also supposed to be a skin optimizing foundation. It's supposed to improve the look of your skin tone, enhance your natural radiance and hydration and refine your skin texture. It's got vitamin E, niacinamide, and some other skin benefiting ingredients in here. I did some research on the sunscreen that they included in here. It is one of the potential cancer causing sunscreens in certain concentrations, not in the concentration they're using it in, which is 2.7%. You can use the sunscreen up to 4% here in the US, Australia, New Zealand, and Korea. In other parts of the world, um, concentrations up to 8% are permitted with the exception of Japan where they permit 3%. So this is primarily a UVB protection sunscreen with very, very minimal UVA protection. To get UVA, you need to pair it with something else. It seems like the reason why they use this at all is because it's water soluble and feels really light on the skin. A lot of times it is put in products when you want something with a very light, non-greasy finish. I know some of you like to know if alcohol, drying alcohol is in your foundation. It is the fourth ingredient and fragrance is about two thirds of the way down the list. So this has a fairly thin texture and I notice a light floral kind of expensive scent that does dissipate after it's applied, at least to me anyway, I don't really notice it. It blends out easily, but it dries very quickly. So I prefer to apply this either with a damp or a dry sponge, depending on the coverage level I want. When I apply it with a brush, I find it can get streaky. And once those streaks are there, I can't go back and, and press them out with a sponge because they're set down. I would say this is a true light medium to medium coverage foundation, depending on the coverage level you want, but not because it builds on itself to get you from light medium to medium coverage. Now after application, it gives a nice natural finish and some days it looks really beautiful before setting, especially if my skin prep is extra hydrating. It does seem to settle in kind of a natural soft matte, kind of a powder finish, which is why I think when I try to build it, it, it sticks to itself and gets patchy looking, even more powdery looking in those spots. It just messes up every time. I couldn't capture it on camera to save my life. I could see it in my magnifying mirror and I would try to capture it on camera, but I just couldn't. And I have to use a very, very light hand when I set this foundation with my usual translucent setting powders because there have been occasions where I have set this and it's almost like the powder and the foundation fuse together and, and sink into my pores and give me polka dot pores and simultaneously remove coverage. I think I did get a clip of when this happened. I had really nice coverage before and after applying powder, I was like, what happened here? But if I use a really light hand to set my powder, it looks nice. I'm not blown away by it, but it does look nice. By the end of the day, pretty much every day I've tried it. I think I've grabbed at least three end of the day clips for you. I just feel like I look rough. One day I felt like I looked dry, but I still had shine. And on a day when I was more hydrated and everything looked nice, I was shinier and it wore away faster. I've used primer with it. And while it looks better a little bit longer, I'm still just not wowed by it. I spent so many days trying to get a magic formula to make this foundation work, partially because it's 
$70. I, I felt like something was wrong with me that I wasn't liking it. And because I think that soft matte finish that fuses to your skin and looks like skin can be so beautiful on mature skin as well as combination oily and normal skin types can wear really beautifully when it's done right. But I just find this to be such a finicky foundation and a $70 foundation or 55 for the refill, whatever it is, shouldn't be finicky. I shouldn't have to play around to make this work. I know some people are really enjoying this. Maybe they have more normal skin than I do that doesn't have to strike that perfect balance between too hydrated, not hydrated enough. I don't know. This just did not work for me, unfortunately, and I really wanted it to. Let me know in the comments if this foundation roundup helped you make some kind of a decision. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, be sure and check out my recent makeup dupes video here. I had some really, really great ones in there and I have another one coming up soon. So if you're not subscribed, be sure and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it or any future uploads. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.